Hey everybody, Patty Ann here. Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you a really cute thing that you can make for little girls for Christmas or their birthdays or just any time at all or maybe even yourself. So this is what I'm going to show you how to make and I think they're really, really, really cute. It's a little barrette. Hopefully you can see it well. It's got the barrette on the back so that you can put it in the child's hair or your hair and here's another one this one was just this one was made out of organza I'll have links for these things all below for you this one was made out of tool okay and this one was made out of organza and I also took a marker one of my alcohol markers and colored it so that it would have more color in this second layer right here okay so let me show you what you'll need for the project. I'll show you first of all what you absolutely must have. Obviously your embroidery machine and the file and a 4x4 hoop. You can do more in a larger hoop but one at a time works perfectly in a 4x4 hoop. You'll need some of this water soluble stabilizer. Not the kind that's real flimsy or um, filmy like a saran wrap but the kind that's like this but you can kind of see through a little bit but it's not that real filmy stuff it's not like this okay that this kind of stuff is called topper so I keep mine in a plastic bag because I had the mistake of getting one of these rolls wet and honestly it, it ruined it because it, it went through all the way and every time I opened a new piece there was a big hole in it where it had washed away so you need the wash away or water soluble stabilizer. You need your hoop. And obviously if you're going to make it into little girl or person um, barrettes, you'll need these clips. And I'll have those linked for you down below as well. All right. The other, here's some optional stuff. Well, you'll need a, a bobbin, an empty bobbin, because you'll want your bobbin, bobbin to have the exact same um, thread in it that your upper thread holder has okay now the thread is important I think if you don't care if you're happy just trimming around your organza just like this and you're happy with as close as you can get you don't need to worry about this but I like to get really close and then I'll show you the optional tool I really like to use too and when I'm using that optional tool I want to make sure I'm using rayon thread and I'm going to show you in a minute up on my screen where you can get rayon thread really inexpensively so this is not rayon thread this is Floriani thread this will melt when I use the special tool I don't want to use this this is a big spool of thread I had around the house and I tried this with my tool and indeed it did not melt so this is rayon thread Sulky makes rayon thread and they make polyester thread for the technique I'm going to show you want the rayon thread again you don't have to if you don't care about some little things that might stick out or poke out a little bit here's another one and it says rayon right on it so you know that's rayon thread and of course I will wind the bobbin with that okay these are some other optional things you might like to put beads on yours as you may have seen on this little red one I had the cutest little, hopefully you can see that, there you go, cute little red flower that I put in the center. All right, you will be using your glue gun more than likely. I like to use these little things so I don't burn my fingers, which I've done so many times. But the optional tool I'm using is this one. It's called a heat craft tool. Now I bought this because I used to work at a quilt shop and they had this one and I could get it at a good price. You can also use if someone around your home has a soldering iron gun, whatever, you can use that. You can use a wood burning tool that works also. But what this does is this. Now where did I put it? Oh, it's over here. All right so when I'm done with my project before I put it all together and I'll show you this you can go around the edges of these pieces and it simply melts off the extra bits that you don't want on there and again I'll show that to you later 
if you want to stay for the n nitty gritty. And by the way, at the very end, I'll show you how I resize this file in my software. So you may just want to do yours in your machine and may not want to follow that part. So, you know, I'll do that at the end. Um, I do use in Brilliance, and I do have a link for that down below as well. Okay, let's see. This was just to clean the tip of this if you get a lot of stuff on it. All right, so let's look up at my screen now. I said I was going to show you a cheap place to get some uh, thread, some rayon thread. So let's look up here. So I am actually at the Joann website, and I love doing this. I have the link for you down below. I appreciate it if you use my link. I get a teeny tiny commission. Honestly, from Joann, it's probably pennies. But every little bit helps me to be able to get the supplies I need and just keep this place running so I can keep bringing tutorials to you. Anyway, I wanted to show you this because I think it's fabulous. Look, right now, this thread, now they don't have all the colors, but they have a lot of colors, and they're really cheap. I paid a lot more than this, or I just bought mine from Sulky. So right now, you can see you can get the red, the Christmas red, for $7.79, which is a fabulous price. But listen, I want you to look up here, right? And if you click here, 20% off your total pick up in-store purchase so that's what I always like to do I order my things online then I go out I just go to the register they have it already bagged for me I've already paid for it I can even send my husband or my son or anybody to go pick it up for me so I don't have to interrupt my crafting but look let's see I'll put uh, this Christmas green um, and I'm gonna pick it up this is where I live it says there's three available let's see See, add to my bag for pickup. All right, let's see. I, th I think I actually will add a few other ones that I don't have. I think I'll put this pretty blue in. Uh, add it to my bag for pickup. And let's see. Oh, okay, right now, as you can see, I have this program called Honey. It's an app on my uh, computer. And it goes through and it checks to see if there are any other... Um, coupons it might be used that would save me more money so it's really saved me a lot of money you might want to check it out I'll have a link for it down below for you too if you're not familiar with it just so you can check it out and remember so it's going through and checking all kinds of um, coupons for me to see which one is the best one to save me the most amount of money okay what I'm going to do now is just cut two pieces of this organza that are about an inch larger on all sides than my hoop. There's one and okay. So now what you're going to do is you're going to hoop the organza. So you're going to take one piece of organza and put it down like this. Inside of the organza you're going to put a piece of your wash away stabilizer. It only has to be as big as the inside part of your hoop. So you have this piece. Then you put this piece on next and I made it a little larger than what I needed to. And then this piece obviously goes in here. And I like to make sure it's nice and taut. And if you'd like to, what you can do is use uh, pins like this. And just put a pin in here and have that go right on the edge there so that it will help to keep your material. Uh oh, I forgot to put my second piece of... Oh, I wonder if anybody noticed. So you're sandwiching this piece of stabilizer in between the two layers of organza like that. Okay, so there we go. Now I'm going to put this piece on here. Okay. And again, I can just pull this a little bit to make sure it's nice and tight. There's no wrinkles in anything. And again, I can put the pins in here if I want to. Okay, and then we're ready to go. 
I already have my bobbin threaded with the same color of thread that I'm going to use. I'm going to just turn on my machine so I have to have my carriage to move. Then I'm going to thread it and I'll look for the design which I've saved on my thumb drive from my computer. It's right here. Just look for that. And then I'll just go through these designs. And there it is right there. Once I find it, I hit the up arrow and it's ready to begin. So there are three different steps, but they're all going to be the same color. And I'll just begin sewing or embroidering by putting down my presser foot and go. When it first starts out, sometimes I like to stop it so that I can cut off the very first hunk of thread. <laughs> Okay, that step is done. Now it's going on to step number two. Um, and that is going to begin down here in the lower right hand corner, the second layer of the flower. And after step number three or two was done, I just am continuing on with step number three. As you may be able to see right here, it does say that the whole stitching out project takes eight minutes. Okay, at this point my stitching is complete, so I've gotten out my alcohol markers because I've decided to go ahead and spruce this up just a little bit. It says it's finished sewing, so I can lift my presser foot and just take this out like that. I can leave it in the hoop if I want to, and doing this on a scrap piece of paper, I'm going to get out some markers. don't remember what I used before, but... I just pick out a couple. Hmm, I'm not sure what to use. So I'll move these out of your way so you can see, hopefully. And I think I'll just sample this to see what it looks like on this edge here to see if it's a color I'm going to like. And I kind of like that. Let's see, what is this? That's pretty too. So maybe I'll just try to blend these two a little bit and see what I can come up with. I think I'll do them on the top piece. So I'll start with this one right here and maybe just come out like this a little bit. So I'm just coloring on the organza, just kind of shading, coming out a little bit more like that. And of course, I probably could have put the darker one in first. So maybe I'll go ahead and take this darker one now and go over top and maybe put some even dots on there <laughs> okay there's a little piece of black dot that showed up from somewhere okay so that's all i have to do now and now the next thing i'll do is i'll just take these pins out and take this out and this might be a reason why you'd like to use a bigger hoop so that you could put more in there and you'd be less likely to waste as much. But you know, really, this uh, organza is inexpensive. So I don't worry too much about that. Let's see, I'll use my nice little scissors that I really like. So I'm just going to trim close, cut off any threads that I forgot. Just going to trim close like this. And once I trim it close, I need to remember not to throw it into my cup of coffee or my cup of tea, but into the mug that I have with water in it. So I have one right here. It's one of my mugs I made earlier. You probably saw me make it when I was doing some sublimation on it. Spilling the tea. I'll just throw that right in there and get this one. Same thing. Well, be careful you don't cut the stitches. So after this is done and after these dry, 
I'll show you why I like to use that special tool. And again, it can be one that you buy particular, especially for crafts, or it could be one that someone in your family has for wood burning, maybe you have for wood burning, or for soldering. So as these are sitting in here, what's happening is the stabilizer is going to be coming out and I'll meet you back here shortly. Okay, I've taken this one out. It's still a little bit sticky from the stabilizer, but I like that because it'll give it a little bit more body. Now, in the directions, they recommend that you get a little mini cupcake pan or something like that and stick these down in there because that way you could make a bunch at one time. Uh, I don't have one of those where it's upstairs. So I thought, you know what? I bet I can just use my tape dispenser here, shove it down in there, and kind of let it dry for a bit like that. And it'll give it a little bit of a rounded look. And while that's drying a little bit, I'll take this one out. Again, I can feel the sliminess of it, the stickiness, but that's okay. I'll just fold this over like this to dry it. And sometimes I actually take my little gun that I have. Let's see, this guy right here, my embossing tool, and I use that to help dry things a little quicker. Another thing I thought to do was maybe to use some of these little clips and hold it like this and just let them dry like that. But you can see this one is already pretty dry. I'll dry it a little bit more and then I'm going to show you how to use that tool and then how to put it onto the barrette. Okay, I'm going to try to show you the difference. Maybe you can see that piece of string. This is the rayon thread. If I run this really hot tool along that thread, notice it's not breaking. Nothing's happening to it, right? Nothing happened to it. I have that. This is right inside of it. Okay. On the other hand, if I was to get out another thread, let me grab one over here. This is one of my Floriani threads. And let me show you the difference here. This is definitely a polyester thread. So maybe, hopefully you can see that between my fingers. I don't know if you can. Right, let's see if I move it down. Okay, move this out of the way. Right between my fingers, here you can see the thread maybe. When I take this hot thing to the polyester thread, boom, two pieces now just like that, right? See this? It's between my pointer and my middle finger. Okay, and if I do this, it breaks it just like that. But with the, pol with the rayon thread on the other hand, here it is again. I can put it between my fingers like that again and go like this and it doesn't do anything to it. Okay, I pulled it apart that time, but in general it doesn't do anything to it. So now what you're going to do is this. You're going to take your flower and you see all this extra organza here. I'm going to be able to melt that right off of here and it's not going to bother with that thread at all. So if I didn't cut close, I can just come in here with this tool and melt that right off. Now, I didn't do a very good job of that because I need my tin foil. Here, okay. So again, we'll go right in here and just go like that. Maybe you can see like that, it's gone again. Just go like this and just go through here and all that excess will be gone. It does get hot, so be careful. Don't touch it right away. Use your little tin foil to wipe the pieces off. There. Okay, let's see if I can. Here's a nice big piece. Maybe you can see right there. So I just take this tool and it just melts it right off like that, right all the way up to the stitching line, perfectly. Right there, perfect. Okay, I'm gonna finish this and then I'll be back to show you how to put it together. Okay, I finished that and I also put some little beads 
in the center of this. Maybe you can see them. In addition to putting little beads in there, I've gotten three different kinds of ribbons that will match up. I just made them about, oh, 19, 18, 20 inches long, whatever. I'm just going to tie these into a bow. Okay. So, like that. Okay, because I think it's fun if there's all different kinds that show up like that. Okay, uh, let's make it a little bit neater. <laughs> okay, that looks pretty good to me. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on here and then glue all of this onto the back of the bow or the um, barrette. What I could do if I want to, since I still have my needle attached to this piece, I could go ahead and go through the back piece here to attach them together. Uh, or I could just use hot glue. Either one would work. But since I have that needle still attached, I'm just going to use it. And then what I also could do in addition to that once I'm pretty comfortable with enough times through here is I could go right through the middle of this kind of sew it together and I think this is going to be so cute so I'm just going back and forth and again, I could be doing all of this with my hot glue, but I usually have a tendency with my hot glue to really glue my fingers. <laughs> so, since I have the needle and thread out, I'm just going to use it. Just going back and forth. And I've used the same thread that I used, that rayon thread that I used the whole time today. Maybe two more times I'll do. Okay. Up and down one more time. And I could have been putting beads on the whole time I was doing this too. All right, that is so cute, y'all. So super cute. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and cut this off. Put this back here so I don't end up stepping on it. And tie this off. get out my hot glue gun and okay then I'll take this and I'll simply glue it on one of my barrette pieces with the hot glue gun. So this is the piece onto, well, let's see. No, I'm going to pin, glue it onto the rough side so that when my granddaughter, whomever puts this on, the smooth side goes up against their scalp. Maybe it's supposed to be the other way, but I don't think so. I like it like this. So I'm just going to put hot glue on there and glue that on like that. And I think that that turned into a super cute little bow. I will trim off some of these edges to make them look a little bit neater. But I think that just turned out beautifully. All right. For those of you who want to see how I did change the size of this, come on up now to my software. If the others of you don't care to see that, thanks so much for joining me. Give me a thumbs up and please subscribe. 
and I hope to see you again soon. Okay, if you look up here, you can see I've opened both the top layer and then here is, or this is the bottom layer, I'm sorry, and here's the top layer. So I simply clicked on the top layer, right clicked and said copy, and then I came back to the bottom layer and I said right click and paste. So now I have both of them on this one, so I'm going to get rid of this page. Okay, with them both selected, did here. I wanted them both to fit on my 4x4 hoop and I wanted them to be a nice size for my granddaughter or for a child or even for a grown-up actually. Uh, so what I did was I moved them apart. I scrolled out a little bit and I moved them apart. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab both of these things, click on one, pull down my uh, control key and click on the other one so I have them both selected and I'm going to just squish them down okay so I've just squished them down and when I did that if you'll notice the number of stitches changed right now it's 4066 if I undo that look at the number of stitches 5521 so I'm going to move them down again and I'm going to see if both of these will now fit on my 4x4 hoop and they don't so I need to make them a little smaller yet by grabbing both of them. And I can just come over here and grab everything and then just make it smaller. And now both things will fit. And actually I could, if I want to, just make them a tiny bit bigger. Okay. And that is all I did. Then I went to File, Save Stitch File As, and I saved it as a... Um, I saved it as, I'll just call it barrette, right there. So now I'm ready to go. I would just save that now on my thumb drive, take it over to my machine as you saw earlier, and that's all there is to it. So I hope you I like this just tutorial. super cute. They would make wonderful, wonderful stocking stuffers or Christmas gifts or birthday gifts or any kind of gift, actually. Halloween's coming up. You could use blacks um, and oranges together. Christmas, red and green. Uh, you could put the leaf on there. There also there was also a leaf that came in this same one because if you go and get this file, you'll see that you can actually make this a lot larger, and you could make it into something on an adult shirt or something like that. And I'm thinking I could even take my little tool that melts things and melt the center right out of this, and then put lights up through it and make it like a garland on my mantle or something like that. So again, thanks so much for joining me. Bye-bye.